Welcome. So today we have a very interesting problem for you, the maximum contiguous subsequence sum problem. All right, so uh, after today's class, you're gonna be able to, to sort of state what the problem is and to be able to solve this MCSS problem uh, just by, by, by looking at it. And you're also gonna be able to, uh, to, to develop uh, a, a sort of a simple uh, algorithm to solve this and find out the exact runtime of it. All right. So let's, let's get started. All right. So what we have is, is we, we have a problem here where we have an array um, and in this, this array, all right, uh, this, this essentially a sequence of numbers here in, in an array, uh, some of them are negative as we see, some are positive, right, and so on. And what I wanna do is, is figure out what is the, the maximum contiguous subsequence sum. Well, whoa, what does that mean, right? So I wanna find a sum, all right? So I know how to find sums of things, right? You know, I, I could find the sum of every element in this array, right, and give what its, its value is, all right? But I wanna find the, the, the maximum sum within here, okay? So, you know, hey, the sum of, of, of these guys, right, is, is, you know, four plus two is six. Is there any way to get a bigger sum? Sure, okay, so, so I don't need the whole thing. I can find the sum of any subsequence I want, right? So is there one that's bigger than four plus two? Oh, sure, I could do four plus two plus one, right? That's, that's seven, that's bigger than six. That one is maximum. Great, um, uh, how about four plus two plus one plus another four? Oh, that's 11, that's a subsequence. Oh, but here's where I have this last word here called contiguous. And contiguous means that all the elements in your subsequence need to be bordering each other, right? Uh, so, so they have to be, they have to be, um, be bordering. So if I take a look at this guy, these three give me seven, right? And is there any one that's bigger than that? Go ahead and answer question one on your quiz, right? So this is the same thing as the quiz question and ask you to find out what is that biggest uh, contiguous subsequent sum, All right? Take a minute and solve that. All right, you're back from pausing the video. Uh, let's see what you got. Did you come up with with this subsequence right here um, with an MCSS of nine? All right, I hope so, right? You might have tried to say, well, this guy's seven, this is nine, and you know if I join these two together, uh, this middle part is a negative 14, so if I try to include the negative 14, that, that's kind of like too deep of a, of a valley to, to cross, so that doesn't make it sense to, to join those guys together, right? Um, Sure, and then, and you're starting to get it some of, some of the ways to optimize this actually, right? Uh, good, but we've we've got a nine here, so let's let's define this a little bit more um, more formally. This is a really neat example. This MCSS problem sounds kind of fun. I mean, I, I don't know you know where would actually use it in practice, uh, but um, but it is a very nice example. So why do we study it if if we're not going to necessarily use it out in the job, right? Um, well, it's, it's it's kind of interesting. It's it's interesting because of the mix of positives and negatives in the array, right? Now, if you consider, right, it's kind of interesting. What if they were all positive, right? What would the MCSS be if you had an array with all positive numbers? Yeah, you're right. It'd be it'd be the sum of the entire array, right? You just take all of them. That'd be boring. You'd always have the same answer. Just add up the numbers in the array. All right. What if they were all negative? Hmm. Well, if they were all negative, adding any of them is worse than having none of them, and the empty subsequence is a valid subsequence, right? So you would just, it would, it would just be, take none of them, right? And it has an MCSS uh, of zero in that case, all right? Um, all right, fine. What if this were just the maximum subsequence sum, right? So we left out the word contiguous. Well, then you're right, you would, you would add, uh, all the positives, right, and just skip the negatives. So, so in that case, we'd go back here and you would just add the seven and nine and get and get sixteen, right? But that's also kind of boring, right? So it's really this mix of them that makes this an interesting problem to solve, and it's kind of neat. We we're going to analyze a couple different solutions. We're gonna we're gonna come up with a, a just super um, obvious solution first and analyze it. And then we're gonna um, then we'll come back and we'll talk about the the actual um, analysis of it, and then we're we're gonna actually go ahead and, and make it more efficient a little bit later. Okay, so um, 
here's our formal definition, right? And some chance to, to catch up with the quiz here. Uh, so given a non-empty sequence of n uh, possibly negative, right? Some are going to be negative integers here. Um, and the formal definition mathematically, uh, mathematicians are, are, are use one based indexing. We're actually, in all of the work that we're, we're going to do, we're going to start it at, at zero, right? So, so, um, so starting at zero, um, just like an array. Um, we want to find the, maxiv, the maximum consecutive subsequence. So the sum going from i to j, which is nothing, I mean, it really is just a summation going from i to j of all the array elements. So a for array elements, s for sums. Uh, and typically when you find MCSS, you also want to know where it is, right? So where does it begin? Where does it end? What, what indices, okay? Uh, so go ahead and answer the quiz questions right now. So questions two through four, they should be reviewed from what we have. So pause the video, do those questions uh, right now, and then we'll, we'll come back and check our work in a second. Well, the first question uh, we already did. So question two. All right. So we want to find here the 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 uh, so the sum from one to three. So again, there are zero indices, zero based. So we we want this sum here, which should give you a sum of eleven plus negative four is seven plus thirteen is twenty. All right. All right. The second problem right here. Um, we want to know what is the MCSS. All right. Some of you might have said uh, you might have said something like uh, two, or you might have said, well, it shouldn't should be two. It should be bigger than that. Maybe you said four, or maybe you, you said six. Okay. In this example, actually, the MCSS uh, is if you take the sum of these guys, you get four plus negative three is one plus six is seven. Right. That actually works. So so just recognize that you might want to bridge some negative ones if the positive on the other side is worth it. Right. That's one way of thinking about it. Uh, and the third, third, or question four here. So if, if everyone's negative, what's the MCSS? And we said zero because um, you know if everyone were negative, adding any single one makes it negative, so it makes it smaller than zero. Um, so it's going to be non-maximal, right? Smaller than uh, than actually taking the empty subsequence. Okay. All right. Uh, so task number one, right, is to write a simple correct algorithm that solves this right and your goal here think back to 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 cir uh horace quote all right premature optimization is the root of all evil do not try to make this fancy do not try to make it fast in fact in some sense i want to even say you're better off if it's slow right because the slow one the super brute force what we call a brute force algorithm right uh is really easy to convince someone that it is correct, okay? Because it's basically so obvious that there's no way that it can't be correct. So yours has to be totally correct here. And I want you to pause the video and work for three minutes and come up with a completely brute force algorithm, right? What does brute force mean? I mean, come up with an algorithm that actually computes the sum of every single subsequence here. Right? You can do it with a few loops. Uh, it's going to be really slow. Again, I don't care, but, but actually loop over every subsequence and find the biggest one. Right? And that you're going to use, um, you're going to do for question five. In our next video, we'll, we'll talk about the, and, and a potential answer to it. All right, see you then. Mm -hmm.